if you're looking at this framework here and we've taken the buy stops, we have our entry pattern here, what would you be looking for as a downside objective? Well, I'm going to teach you the liquidity matrix. Okay. And sounds pretty cool. Sounds neat and all that, but watch what it is. This here is your range. This is the low of the day and this is the high of the day thus far. So if we take that range and split it from the low to the high to get the midpoint, all of this can be determined by a simple 50 level on a Fibonacci. So you drag your Fib from this high down to that low or vice versa and have your 50 level highlighted. Then anything above that 50 level, this is referred to from an algorithmic stance as a premium market. It means it's expensive. Now markets can stay in a premium for a while and not go to a discount, which would be below the 50 point. Okay, 50%, anything down here is a discount. If you're bearish, if you're ever going short, you wanna look at the previous range. Where are you at inside that range? So when this formed here, that little fair value gap, once that formed, you're thinking, okay, we are in a premium, so algorithms will want to go to a discount. That's the opposing side of the marketplace. So if it's going short here, it's driving the market lower. What does that mean? The algorithm is going to start pricing lower. You can have all the buyers in the world come in. If the algorithm is in a sell program and it's going lower, it does not matter. It's going to reprice lower and lower and lower. And then what will happen is those buyers that may come in with a huge influx of volume, they're going to get crushed and they get squeezed. You ever hear that term? Oh, this is a bear squeeze. This is a bull squeeze. All that is an excuse for them not to know why the algorithm is doing what it's doing. That's it. It's all it is. It's an out. Okay. I'm telling you, this is what's really going on. So the market's moving from this premium high, this specific entry point to a level below the 50 of this range, this low and this high. Now I want you to, again, go back and rewind the video once we're done and look at that execution page where I showed you my entries going back and forth, up and down, up and down, and where I got out at, where I got in at, okay? I want you to think about what below this level here, the 50 level, what is resting below here? Sell stops. So now think about the idea of someone like you and I that would see this ideal entry as a short. We have to sell to get in that short. How do we get out of that short? We got to buy it back or cover it by buying. Well, we're going to find willing sellers at a low price relative to this point here. They're willing already sitting down there with their sell stops right below that low. Now look closely. What else resides right near that low? Do you see it? Pause the video before I show it to you because it, it kind of ruins the experience because if you find it and I don't tell it, it feels good. Right there is that imbalance I mentioned, okay? It's only one single candle passing up and the previous candle is high and the next candle is low. That area right there is an imbalance. From this area here, it went down below the 50 level and attacked these sell stops and completely closed in this imbalance. So every point of this candle's high to this candle's low, that range with the candle only going up, that's a buy side imbalance. It has to have an equal delivery to be efficiently priced and booked by the algorithm. It goes down and completely closes it back in with down movement. Notice the candle on this here, it opens and then trades down. So it fulfills its role of balancing the buy side offering, now the sell side offering. So that is an efficiently delivered price move. Precision elements from the entry here down to here. Everything else after that for the rest of the day, I didn't care about. Even though I had an objective of that old daily low, I wasn't expecting it to run into it this particular day. And that's why I didn't participate anymore the rest of the day. In hindsight, I wish I would have left a small position on and just let it go. But you're going to have that. You're never going to be right about everything all the time, every single day. You're going to leave things on the table. You're going to get in too early. You're going to hold too long. You're not going to buy enough or you're not going to sell enough. There's always going to be some reasons why you didn't do something right. So don't beat yourself up about it. Okay. But if you can find elements like this repeating in the price action, can you agree with me that that is amazing precision? And this is the logic I used to do that trade. The very trade that I showed you that was the largest one 
in the example of saying, which one would you rather learn how to do? I basically just handed you an ATM machine, okay? This repeats every single week, every single week. Now, I want you to count the number of the handles in this move. Let's say you got in at, uh, well, this say you got in at 800, 14,800. It started to go down, you trust it. Okay, we're gonna go short. Ideally, you wanna enter as it goes into that, but it's gonna take time for you to trust that. But let's say you got in at 14,800. If you got out down here, like I did, I exited as it went right to the top of that range, right here, this range here, that's the top of it. Once it went below that, that was it for me. That closed the trade. Is that five handles? Is that 10 handles? Is that 20 handles? Is that 30 handles? Is that 50 handles? No. It's over 100 and some. Now, let's assume for a moment that you get good at this. Or I get the inclination that I want to go to some kind of a deep discount broker. And I go in and I do trades like this and I'm putting on 15 to 25 full futures contracts. What do you think the results are going to be? <laughs> yep. So not everything is going to be easy right away. And you're not going to be able to see these things happen just because you sit in front of the charts. You have to study and you have to practice. And by experience of looking at old moves and watching real price action as best as you can, if you can't watch it live, TradingView has a replay button where you can watch the candles kind of form, but they're, they're a little stilted because it's not completely painting the candle, okay? And you can't practice with entering like that. You can only just study how price moved and gravitated towards certain levels. It's the best thing you can have if you, if you at least consider doing that much, that's good. But if you really want to take it to the next level and say you're running a business or if you're going to school or you have a job and you can't watch the time frame around the opening of the index futures. And I like watching it around 8.30 in the morning, New York local time to 11 o'clock. There's usually a setup in there that I'm going to be able to find. Obviously, you've seen I did multiple setups and executions today. But the point is this, that's like that sweet little spot in the morning that I focus on.